Let's see what these stages are. First, we want to research to identify problems and opportunities. This is where we clarify the challenge that we want to work on. And this challenge that we work on is a meaningful one, right? And we get insight, we get opinion from all the different stakeholders that are involved, the people that we serve, the people that we work with. What do they think the challenge is? What do they think the problems are? What do they think the opportunities are? What do they think matters? What do they think this future is that we should work on addressing that we should make our challenge, right? We need this diversity of viewpoint to be able to really get a clear idea of what this challenge is. And it's that intersection of what a lot of different folks think from ourselves to our colleagues to our students. So that's the first step is a lot of uh, research to be able to figure out what that challenge is. And I think you probably know, right? You've been working, you have that phronesis or that practical wisdom of knowing what a lot of these people think, what they want, what they need, and knowing how to get that information from them to be able to craft and clarify this challenge. So after we've got a challenge in mind, we need to break that challenge down. We need to turn it into questions, because if we've got questions, we can generate ideas. And we need to organize those questions from general to more specific, almost going up a ladder or up the pyramid to be able to create our questions that are based on our challenge. And when we have questions, we can start to get ideas based on those questions. We can go into that ideation stage where we're generating ideas. And hopefully we gather a lot of ideas, not only ideas that we come up with ourselves using various tools and techniques I'll show you, but also maybe uh, ideas we gather from reading things, seeing those roots, those best practices, ideas we get from conversations with colleagues or students that emerge, ideas that we get from observing something, ideas that we get from holding maybe a group brainstorm or posting a question online to our stakeholders. Many different ways to get ideas. But our goal is to get a lot of ideas. And if we have a lot of ideas, we need to sort things out. We need to analyze and synthesize these ideas, which is the next stage. We need to almost throw them all into this funnel and, and narrow them down, winnow them out, sift and winnow, as they say at the University of Wisconsin, to go from a lot of ideas to fewer ideas that we want to definitely develop and work on. And after we have these ideas that we've analyzed and that might meet what we're trying to accomplish, we start to develop some of those raw ideas into concepts. We bring them together. We flesh them out more. We build them. We almost grow them like a tree grows. We develop some of those best ideas and best themes we've synthesized into concepts. And when we have some concepts, we're getting close to being able to launch our innovation, right? But we want to be able to test and select these concepts. See if they might work. See if they might be of interest to our stakeholders, the people we're serving. See if uh, there are a few of them that are better than others that we should dedicate more uh, interest in and more energy in in developing and launching. And then finally, when we've gone through that whole process and we have some concepts we've tested and selected, they're pretty well developed. It's time to communicate in advance. That means we've got to communicate to everybody else, here's what this concept is. We're ready to take action on it. We're ready to launch it. Here's how we're going to communicate it to you so that we can advance it. We can get it out there into the world uh, and keep building it and developing it because we know an innovation never really stops. So it's taking that gold star, that gold circle idea that we have and bringing it to the mountaintop, doing the work of rolling it up, I guess you could say, uh, and bringing it out there into the world, into the horizon, into the future. It's now activated because we've communicated it. But we also realize that while the mountaintop or the tip of the iceberg is just a small part of it, that there is a lot underneath. That's the foundation of it all. And after we've launched something, we need to keep working that innovation process to keep making it successful and making it better. And so essentially, we're continuously innovating, right? It becomes almost a part of our culture where we're taking a raw challenge and we're doing something about it. We're going through this system, this stage process, and we're launching it into the world and communicating it. And we know that then after we do that, we need to keep making sure that we're doing well. Uh, and this will take more innovation on that idea that we actually launched. So this is the innovation system that we'll be guiding you through step by step with activities in each one of these stages.